The Central Statistical Office of St. Lucia is gearing up for its quarterly labor force survey. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is working with the Statistical Office, establishing protocols for enumerators who will be returning to the field to ensure not only their safety but that of the public as well. More in this report. The Central Statistical Office of St. Lucia is gearing up to commence its quarterly labor force survey. The Statistical Office, since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, had to resort to conducting its quarterly labor force surveys via telephone. However, now with the reopening of the country, it is looking to recommence its face-to-face -face interviews. Deputy Director of the Statistical Office of St. Lucia, Richard Harris, indicated that the office is working with the Ministry of Health and Wellness in determining protocols for immunerators who are returning to the field that will ensure their safety as well as that of the interviewees. We are here to um, engage the Ministry of Health with regards to our enumerators returning to the field in a manner that would be that would ensure their safety and would ensure that we can um, effectively perform our face-to-face -face interviews as we um, visit the different communities throughout the island um, our surveys our labor force survey especially this this particular engagement is um, directly related to the labor force survey um, which, is, which entails visiting communities, visiting households, and conducting face-to-face -face interviews. So given the um, prevailing conditions concerning the, um, the pandemic and the um, prevailing protocols that are in place, we want to ensure the safety of not only our enumerators, but the persons that we interview at the households. The survey is targeted at a randomly selected group of 800 households from all districts and across all demographic groups. It seeks to measure the levels and rates of employment, unemployment, and economic inactivity in St. Lucia. Department of Environmental Health's Senior Environmental Health Officer with responsibility for COVID-19, Emerson Vitalis, explained that the protocols are based on health standards, the best practices in terms of operating in a COVID-19 environment. These protocols, which were rolled out last Thursday, will aid the enumerators in conducting their tasks in the safest possible way. The enumerators, Vitalis indicated, were also trained accordingly. There are three critical areas which we, we, we speak about, and they, recall, well, they come under infection prevention control. And we, we promote hand hygiene, we promote social distancing, and we promote the wearing of masks, and also hand sanitization or hand hygiene, sorry. So these are what we're going to be, you know, key components of, of the presentation. How do you go into, into, into the field out there? How do you interact, the safest way to interact? And I think, you know, the key one is the, 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 the physical distance in between the respondent and the interviewer, how you manage the situation when you get there. And it's not only about just asking the questions, but the enumerators also has to be vigilant in terms of the approach, in terms of even notice, noticing any symptoms or, you know, someone may be exhibiting. Um, it, they, they are not clinical people, but again, if you recognize someone is in coughing excessively or sneezing, I mean, it, it sends a sign to you. And again, we will... Um, train them today in terms of how to identify some of those key components. The engagement training workshop was held on Thursday, 17th June 2021. The Central Statistical Office of St. Lucia is tentatively looking to recommence its face-to-face -face interviews in the next quarter. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norvell. The Global Environment Facility Small Grants Program, which is implemented by UNDP, is supporting St. Lucia's efforts to integrate research and innovation into the apiculture industry. Jesse Leos reports. Since 2012, Jeff SGP UNDP St. Lucia has funded 13 apiculture projects totaling EC $1.6 million. Already successes have been achieved in producing byproducts such as soap, shampoo, lotions, candles, muscle pain relief creams, granola and mead, which is a delicious wine. This investment has already contributed to a 15% increase in honey production, trained over 200 beekeepers and increased their income by 40 to 60%. 
Recent testing of St. Lucia's honey by a laboratory in France has confirmed its suitability for exporting to the European Union. Driven by a vision which focuses on research and innovation, Jeff SGP UNDP, the Government of St. Lucia, the Ionola Apiculture Collective and other NGOs will establish the Apiculture Research and Learning Institute, ARLI, as a center of excellence for research, innovation and learning in St. Lucia and the Eastern Caribbean. What is the mission of Ali? To contribute to a sustainable climate smart environment for pollinators. So we are going beyond bees to look at all the pollinators in the environment in St. Lucia through a program that is science driven, important to us, develops and nurtures strategic partnerships, mutually beneficial partnerships, builds capacity and generates benefits for communities. We believe apiculture has those attributes to uplift our rural societies and to contribute significantly to our economy. According to the Law of Diffusion of Innovation, approximately 2.5% of any population are the real innovators. These went behind with the early adopters representing 13.5% of any population will provide the impetus for sustainable development. Jeff SGP UNDP has targeted such pioneers to begin to push us beyond the frontier of science, agro-processing, agriculture and biodiversity in St. Lucia and the Eastern Caribbean. The Ionola Apiculture Collective fits within this pioneering category and has been breaking new ground in this area and will lead us with local and international partners to where we have not been before. We're a collection of young and old beekeepers together, uh, working to try to elevate the industry um, and embrace not just the craft of beekeeping, but also embrace the science of beekeeping. Um, the science is the most critical, important thing that we have left behind. And what we've focused on in our organization is to focus on the science, to try to understand what's happening with our bees, uh, where they are failing and where they are not failing, and how we can improve the ecosystem around and the analysis of the diseases possibly that the bees are carrying. During a recent site visit to the IAC Apiculture Training Center in Castries, a delegation from the Embassy of Taiwan, led by Ambassador His Excellency Peter Chen, was introduced to the vision and mission of the Apiculture Research and Learning Institute, toured the apiary at Viji, and participated in an interactive session of candle making using beeswax. Taiwan uh, provides a broad spectrum of assistance to Senusia, including agriculture, education, technology, business, uh, health, etc. And uh, we, we committed to work with the Lucia government uh, to achieve uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals and also uh, enhance resilience to climate change. And we look forward to working with all stakeholders and partners uh, to uh, benefit all solutions in the region. Uh, so uh, I truly believe uh, when we work together, we will share a better future. In the long run, the Apiculture Research and Learning Institute is expected to serve as a multi-purpose field research center that will focus on growth and optimization of the apiculture industry, mangrove, avifauna, and coral species restoration, and the establishment of a vibrant, diverse, and authentic apitourism experience in St. Lucia and the Eastern Caribbean. To achieve these objectives, Arli will create strong, mutually beneficial and enduring partnerships with St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad and Tobago and Samoa, as well as with local, regional and international universities and research centers. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. The district of Choiselle will soon solidify its place as the craft mecca of St. Lucia. Export St. Lucia announced that it has been receiving increased interest in Chazelle's craft products such as coal pots and weave baskets from foreign markets. As interest from the UK and US markets continues to increase, Export St. Lucia's Chief Executive Officer CEO Sunita Danielle said that Export St. Lucia is collaborating with the Chazelle Craft Association to aid it in accessing foreign markets. One step towards making this a reality is the cataloging of craft products. So what we're trying to do is to get the craft items online and for sale um, by the outside customers and so they'll be able to access cold pots 
um, weave the baskets, anything that the crafters have, um, and they'd be able to access those online. Export St. Lucia is currently working with a buyer in the U.S. market and is in the process of shipping craft items to the United States. Anticipating the growth of St. Lucia's craft industry, the CEO explained that there are plans to expand to other communities. One of the things that Export St. Lucia does is because we are a development agency is that we fill in any gaps that the, the producers themselves are experiencing. So for example, if we see that there is additional need to um, beef up their own expertise, we do that for them. And so um, we do a lot of hand-holding of our clients. Um, we don't believe anybody should be doing it alone. There's a lot of that until we can say, okay, we let you go and do what you have to do. So we will be starting with Chozel, but we do expect to um, really develop a comprehensive program for craft um, throughout the island. Export St. Lucia assured its commitment to the growth and development of St. Lucia's craft industry, finding new ways of supporting the industry and meeting the demands of foreign markets. The Effective Learning Institute continues to play a significant role in St. Lucia's education sector, providing aid to underprivileged students. Hamadi Mark tells us more. The Effective Learning Institute, a regional organization committed to improving learning conditions for the underprivileged, has donated to families in need. The institute, headed in St. Lucia by former educator Peter Anius, provides scholarships to students of underprivileged families. The scholarships cover the cost of uniforms, textbooks, school supplies, tuition fees, transportation, and meal hampers. The provision of these essentials is intended to better equip and encourage students to stay in school. Peter Anius, Island Coordinator of the Effective Learning Institute, says the organization hopes to reduce the rate of school dropouts and, by extension, reduce unwanted social ills. Too often we have children going to school, they do not have what is required, and hence we have problems. So our, edu our organization, what we do is to help these parents, provide the children with what they need. What do we provide? I will remind everyone of our main objectives. And as I read from our document, which stipulates that the ultimate aim of our project of fund is to empower all less fortunate and underprivileged children, those of low socioeconomic status, children whose parents just cannot make ends meet. The scholarships provided by the Institute are funded via crowdsourcing. Philista Flav uses the grandmother of three students who continue to benefit from the Effective Learning Institute. She made a plea to the public to contribute generously to the work of Mr. Anius and his team. Mr. Anius uh, have been providing things for these children for, for many years. And I am asking the, the people out there, when they see Mr. Mr. Peter Anius out there, and he said he's asking for donation. Please try and help because the donation is going a long way and with groceries and school fix, school supplies. And I'm thankful for, for that because he, he, he helps the grandchildren over the, the years. The Effective Learning Institute has on several occasions worked collaboratively with AS Mirage for the provision of school uniforms to the underprivileged. From the Government Information Service, Mark reporting. The former owner of the St. Lucia Stars T20 team donates promotional paraphernalia to schools and youth cricket programs in St. Lucia. One such presentation was made to the Northern Cluster Grassroots Cricket Program. Good afternoon to all. Um, we are here at the Darren Sammy Cricket Ground handing over some cricket paraphernalia like cups, bat, cell phone, casing, cups, cones and other items, which is actually from behalf of Mr. Pandey, former owner of St. Lucia Star. True, Mr. Singh is handing over to the Northern Grassroots Cricket Club for, to use for your enhancement in training, whatever part of training you're doing, for at the youth level or at the higher level, make full use of it, either in communication-wise, training-wise, and maybe those bags can be used to carry your little gear. I hope you enjoyed the little token and I must thank you for being here and making that special effort to be here this afternoon to have this little ceremony, this handing over. So thank you once again.
Yeah, well, let me just thank um, you, Mr. Singh, yeah, and, Mr. and Mr. Pandey, um, for, for such a nice um, gesture. Obviously, we're going to use it um, to the best of, of our ability. I mean, there's bags there, there's bottles, which can sh surely be used by, by the students. So thank you very much. And um, we hope that in the future, maybe we can get bigger and better things from you. Yeah, de definitely. Um, I believe it was a very good gesture. I, I know it will mean a lot to the guys. Um, every time we're always looking to, um, for ways to enhance our game. I mean, there's water bottles, um, phone cases and bags that you guys can use um, to better the train and the transport and communication um, to training. So I believe that is a very good gesture. As, as was mentioned, I, I believe that this gesture would allow um, more of the players to be aware of the Senusha team, the Senusha Zooks team. I believe that it will just broaden their um, base amongst the young individuals to get to know um, more of the Senusha Zooks. Um, majority of them at, at maybe their age were not aware of the CPL, but now they are fully aware of them, the Senusha Zooks at this point. Good run, good run. Good run. Can we get some staffing, a little staffing? Yeah, go to me. The public is hereby informed of the temporary closure of the Four Kodra Road from the main road by Mr. Pap Forestier Castries from Tuesday 22nd June 2021 to Tuesday the 29th of June 2021. This is to facilitate roadworks in that area. The Department of Economic Development apologizes for any inconvenience caused. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of the Lord. Le climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros l'eau et l'air a pris de l'eau. Car les tuiles animaux et plantes. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud. Et qui a tué place qui se pressent dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière se pressent. Car il était d'un côté et allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué à un petit zingas en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait. Pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre. Et il faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous avons tout le monde la terre, Kabouli, gaz, l'huile et le chèbon. Et ça, quand on cause la terre, il a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le monde, c'est pour adapter. Faites tout ça, nous avons fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement du climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Pratique quand nous pour abattre des manches en temps cyclone et godlo. Construire canal pour de l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui canal là par les ordi. Fait tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouver plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger corps et tout notre cette lycée. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayola. Merci, Otta. Janelle, Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government Settlesy, that's the GIS, and some of the Television National PIA, NTN, Caposato Nouvelle Aquayola. Presato, Primus Hutchinson. Department des services publics cette ci chaque année bel et puis nation uni pour observer journée des services publics le 23 en mois de juin 2021 service public cette ci toujours te ca célébrer observance ça là et puis une grande quantité activité mais l'occasion caille bien douce l'année ça là à résultat de maladie corona pour ça ça là la caille en a trois activités qui commencé lundi le 21 pour le 27 à mois de juin 2021. Il y a un c'est un jour pour honorer et apprécier la contribution au travail en service public. Là. Et pour l'occasion de ça, il y a un aspect qui toutes les agences qui ont choisi c'est maintenant pour montrer l'appréciation pour ce travail qui a fait si tellement bien, particulièrement en service de travail qui a été malade de corona qui a pesé à ce pays. Là. Selon le secrétaire permanent, le ministère des Affaires et Services Publics, c'est aussi Mme Peggy Anne Soudat, les employés j'attends un commitment pour la mission de service public là, malgré toute difficulté de la maladie. Ça là. Soudat a vu que si toute agence a montré qu'elle apprécie le travail de ce service public, 
ek vale kod bisyo yo sakai vewitabma rose la tewe yo ek yo kai podwi anko plis toujou sakai osi ekouaje sa pot publik pou empouve aso bon travay ki yo jaka fe lot aktivite ya se yon servis wilis yes pou difon an la fwa ki kai pwen kou sa se mekodi li 23 amwad jen 2021 a Gwan Katedwal Katolik Akastri. Se vi sa la ka i pawet fasa publik a su televizyo NTN ek page Facebook Goverdeman. Aktivite pou obzovans jounen de servis publik ka i bout epi yo Gwan Diskisyon Vodedi li 25 amwad jen 2021 a 9 pou mate a Studio GIS. Sa ka i potiwe l'okazyon pou la ni yon diskisyon kote nasyon ka i sa bay wepi nyo yo konsene situasyon travay a ba korona a set li si ek ki sa sa vle di pou sekte publik la ek ki fa son ek plan ki an plas pou aji epi se challenge la epi sikse aba malade korona. Otowite de sa fe touristik a set li si ja touve konflimasyon ki yo ja touve selekte pou gwan lan ne aba tit la sa se tit la tourist board pou lan ne ya. Non e sa la kapote nou an Travel Industry Awards. Autorité touristique, c'est ici. C'est celle destination à Kaoubla qui trouvait sélectée pour Guanon et Salah. Guanon et touristique, c'est là. Ça, c'est Travel Industry Awards. Ka trouvé en bas, ça y est, l'homme Travel Trade Gazette. Il y en a, c'est chef agence de média à l'Angleterre. Principale responsabilité de l'organisation, c'est pour montrer le service à l'industrie ki an hou degwe, ek ki les an se ajans ki ka potiwe degwe servis la ki le konsumate plisimye. Sa ka fet prinsipalman pou lane 2021 pou selebwe se organizasyon ek biznis touristik ki fe bon pou gwe an ba mala de korona. An ba katigowe primer tourist board pou lane ya, se yon kote industri sa la, si pose moutwe ki manye yo kontune pou opowe ek weste aktif ek vizib a sou la plas touristik e osi pou engaje lot ajans ek le travaye di wan tan sa la ki te si telman brital. Se selman yut destinasyon ki touve chwazi pou gwan lone sa la. Minis ki ni waskonsabilite pou afe touristik a set le si onwa ab Dominik Fede di ki pou yon lane ki pote si telman trakasman se yon go kwayans pou tout ki fe gwan kontribisyon pou chen biznis tourist a set le si vivan. Onwa ab Fede fe kopon ki pou yon ti peyi konsit li si pou touve seleksyon an parmi destinasyon ki set fwa pli gwan kon peyi kon Australia ek Thailand ka moutwe ki peyi a seve zouti ki te bien suife ek travay wed, ek resilience ek hol esprit ki ka moutwe ki nou tout nou tout teni kapasite a ek abilite pou fe pou gwe aba pez korona denye staj den jijman pou gwan lan nesa la ka yi fet pa yon goup e dependan da chef a sektet wis la. Anonsman pou industria ki gwen kompetisyon sa la ka yi fet a Londe li 20 amwad septem 2021. Lone touristik sa la se sel lone touristik sa la sa se travel industry awards la se pli ho a mak de excellence ki ka represente destinasyon de sa fet touristik a la te a. Kon preparasyon jan plas pou bod 9 NF3 ou komanse operasyon, le kiltivate enbe fama ki setifye PN e koz pou lot ki pate jen antirese devlope yon pli pou lan tewe, patikleman a industri fig a set lisi. Sa se wipinyon ministr de sa fe agrikol a peya anon ap Ezekiel Joseph. Selon ministr agrikol la, se fama a ki ka set ki ja setifye ka sa wè sifwe tout se si pò ki nesese pou yo van fig yo al anglite paski yo ja apote bon repetasyon de bon kalite fwi. Me minis agrikol la konse li kilite vate fig pou toujou fe asiwe la ni yon la plas pou yo podwi pou podwi yo avan yo kouman se plate. Mo toujou ka advise famos pa pou des lite yo li pou mate di wou ka y plate epi den lo le tan ou ka haves ou ka achete la plas ou ka achete la plas la la plas la ou nou pou sa asye la plas la la avon ou plati so yon se bo baye abot fig la la plas la la 
right? So, who saw? I mean, who's still a fig? Mm-hmm. Because Lanya la place. Because so part of Lanya la place, mon mon part de guy, part de guy plan de fig. Et puis pour des pour l'année passée, on a eu un shy challenge et puis la place là, because when fresh um, went under, mm-hmm. so so c'est un challenge. Nous passons quand on est à faire bien même même manière. Nous pouvons faire changement. Là, il vient pour situation côté en l'eau, fait qu'à trouver rejeté, à faire reject conforme à habitué créer situation ça là. Ministre Joseph dit que toutes femmes savent pour quelle raison ça a continué fait. Sous une femme qui 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 pour semaine ça qui ça harvest un seul bout de figue et pour dire that on on y veut on y veut twenty bout de figue. L'autre semaine ou semaine après les vignes harvest ces figues là qui plus avancées c'est les gars ils right? So ça qui a affecté qualité figue là. Mais si femme ça a rien en manière pour ça tous les semaines couper tout ça ini. Ah, c'est bon pour si maintenant. Ou pas qu'il y ait problème et puis et puis overgrade. Because ou pas si pose ni problème pour overgrade because on ca harvest. Et puis pour ça nous tout ca advise farmers that vous avez fait fortnightly cutting c'est pas pas bon bail. Si c'est 10 bêtes de figues pour si maintenant point figure tous les semaines. Tous les semaines on ca harvest figue là à sur on right grade là et puis vous avez fait comme turn and ripening overgrade fruits par par problème. Mais donc aussi on peut balancer um low harvest this bread um est-ce qu'on a assez là pour payer travailler right um so 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 ça ça c'est business là so délai on va qui dépou deux semaines um délai là il faut calculer pour trois semaines et puis ça ça pas bon il pas bon vous comprenez so um ça c'est balance là et monsieur madame ça c'est côté notre bout nouvelle là pour aujourd'hui mon cœur monsieur autant pour ca garder mon ca bonne invitation je ne puis moi encore si tu conserver la vie dans une présente autre nouvelle Aquila Presa, on ca vie presa to Chanel. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Novel.